Good afternoon. My name is DeRosa, George DeRosa, past commander of the American Legion Post 162 here in Hillsdale, Woodcliffe Lake in Old Japan. Today is Monday, August the 27th, and we will be taping one of our Legion members, Beverly Rosenstein. Beverly served in the United States Army during World War II and was uh, a, a WAC member, and she'll explain what all that means. Good afternoon, Beverly. Um, first of all, where were you born? I was born in New York City. And I know you're a lady, we don't care to share birth dates, but are you willing to share your birthday with us? Yes. What is your birthday? August 8th, 1921. And this month, how old were you? 91. 91 years old, God bless. Where did you, where did you grow up? I grew up the first few years, until I was about five, I believe, in Manhattan. And then my family moved to Jackson Heights, Queens. And I spent my all the years until I enlisted in, in Jackson Heights. And what schools did you attend when you were in Jackson Heights? I attended PS 69 was a fine school, and from there I went to Hunter College High School, which was an all-girls exclusive, more or less, uh, prep school for Hunter College. I graduated from Hunter College High School in January 1939. I went on to Hunter College and graduated in, actually it would be January 19. 43. Uh, commencement was in February. And you also did some graduate work? What was that? You did some graduate work? Yes. I attended graduate school at Cornell uh, uh, much later on, actually after the war. Okay. And while you were in school, what sports did you play? Well, Hunter College High School didn't have much of a, a gym. So we had a, the girls who were active athletically, and I had always been active athletically because I had an, an older brother. And, and when I was growing up, girls who were active in sports were called tomboys, but that didn't phase me. Uh, I played tennis, but at, at the high school, I played basketball, but oddly enough, and for those folks who are New Yorkers, Hunter College High School was in an old building. It had been a vocational high school building. So the athletes, the girls who wanted to play basketball, had to walk up. This Hunter College High School was situated in Manhattan at between 1st and 2nd Avenues. We had to walk up to Lexington Avenue, take the subway for one stop, to 86th Street to play basketball at PS6 because they had a decent gym. And then from there, we would go home. You said you also enjoyed swimming. Yes, I was athletic all, always, and swimming was a good was a sport. And I still swim, and I, in future years, as you'll find out, I played tennis and coached tennis. What made you decide to go into the service? Well, I'd been a Girl Scout since the age of 10. Not only as a scout, a member of the troop, but I was a scout leader. And I liked the outdoors, I liked the idea of service, and my family was always the kind of family that was very giving and did volunteering. As a matter of fact, my late mother, was knitting bundles for Britain before the U.S. entered the war and subsequently was knitting for the American Red Cross, knitting sweaters and long white woolen stockings, I guess you'd call them, for the submariners who needed them in their long boots. We were always a giving family and my folks, my, both my mother and my dad, always encouraged us.
they were proud of me for having enlisted. Actually, I, I had enlisted in, in January 16th is the date before commencement. Commencement was early in February, and a week after that, I was called to active duty and went on to basic training. You mentioned that uh, from basic training, you had to take a train to Daytona Beach? Yes. The, that, this was in the early stages of the organization of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. And Daytona was the second training place, and I had my basic training there, and from Daytona, my first assignment was to the Air Corps at McDill Field in Tampa, Florida. McDill was headquarters for Third Air, Air Corps. It hadn't been absorbed. Well, it would really, at that time, it was part of the Army. Later on, the Air Corps became the Air Force, a separate entity. But because I had a college education, I always laugh at this, and I could type, and I guess I had all the other qualifications. I became a corporal and the company clerk. We were the 7th 11 WAC Post Headquarters Company at McDill Field. You mentioned that you attended administration school? Yes. Uh, well, actually, from uh, McDill, I was recommended to go to Officers Candidate School, and I went to Des Moines, Iowa for that, and I was commissioned at that time uh, to really you know, inform folks. Since the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was more or less a separate entity, we were commissioned as third officers, which was equivalent to a second lieutenant. From Des Moines, I went to administrative school, was assigned to Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, for administrative training. And within that time, I'm not exactly sure of when, but the um, Army gave us full recognition and we became the Women's Army Corps. And, uh, Definitely, why, why do you think the uh, United States uh, had, for the first time, I think, in the uh, wartime history, female members? Well, there were many women, uh, such as I, who were eager to serve their country. And the uh, Corps was uh, developed originally by Ovita Kohabi. She was the first, I guess you would say, uh, chief, or I think they made her a colonel, to um, promote the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. And since we uh, certainly achieved a great deal and accomplished a great deal as uh, officers and enlisted women, we um, the Army uh, then developed the, us as the or Women's Army Corps. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, our rank was comparable or the same. Before it was, let us say, it was comparable. This time we had the official title of the lieutenant and so on from then on. You then mentioned that you were assigned to the Port of Embarkation in Brooklyn, New York. What is a Port of Embarkation? Well, um, let's, the Port of Embarkation um, was really the administrative headquarters for the troops who were going overseas. And uh, they were, all the paperwork and whatever else was uh, involved in sending a division overseas was probably uh, taken care of at the uh, Brooklyn Army Base. And part of the Brooklyn Ar Army Base, I, I was there, uh, signed there as um, 
assistant adjutant, and I also had to take care of uh, recruiting and uh, several other sections that were, you know, part of the requirement as a base. Then from the uh, base, I was assigned to uh, Army Port Terminals, uh, which was in Manhattan, and the uh, Army, I should say Army Postal Terminals, that's a more accurate description, because what was the uh, procedure Every division that went overseas had a, a core or cadre within the division, men who were, were to handle the mail. But these men had to be trained. And since the army had taken over the general post office, the men were trained at the general post office in Manhattan. But only uh, postal terminals was their local headquarters, and they were quartered in hotels uh, along Broadway for housing, and that was part of my responsibility. Plus, any GI who was going overseas and needed a quartermaster, uh, items which is actually clothing, oh, we had to report to my setup, which was the uh, supply room, in what was the Breslin Hotel. Any idea? Beverly, you mentioned that you had a brother who was in the Army, your brother Roger. What can you tell us about Roger? Yes, uh, an older brother, Roger L. Gutterman, um, who was a very, very bright student. He graduated for those of folks who know New York, he graduated from Townsend Harris High School, which was a prep school actually for City College. He graduated from Townsend Harris High School. You did four years of high school, then three, and he graduated at the age of 15. And he went on to City College. And as I mentioned earlier, my folks were always giving and very, very patriotic. At City College, they had the ROTC, Reserve Officers Training Corps, and Roger was part of that. He went through their basic training and went as on his way to uh, officers training and to be commissioned. However, if you recall the dates, this was the Depression. So for this one, his summer vacation, for his senior year, he got a job, but he was uh, very bright in math, and he started working as an accountant in one of the firms in Manhattan. So they liked him so much and wanted him to keep. He transferred his degree from Uptown City College to Downtown City College, where they granted the Bachelor of Business Administration. And he was then, um, um, couldn't conti continue with the RDC trading because it was just not, uh, you know, uh, available, let us say, because they were marching up in uptown and he was involved in taking classes downtown. Um, actually, too, he, went on to for a master's in teaching and, and so on. Roger was an outstanding young man, a great brother and great son. He was drafted uh, in 1941, and after his basic training, where you have a choice to what section, branch of the army you want to serve, and he said, I'm not going to be a pencil pusher in this war. And he went on and was sent to Fort Riley, Kansas, which was the headquarters for the cavalry. My family rode. We were all pretty good. My father had been an excellent horseman and taught us how to ride. So that was 
a sort of um, a good spot. Anyway, the, during the war, of course, the cavalry was mechanized, and although they did use horses to some extent, say for ceremonial purposes, they were trained in mechanized cavalry, reconnaissance, so to speak. That was their title. And he went overseas with the 36th Infantry Division. The 36th reconnaissance troop. I believe you mentioned was, North Africa. And they went to North Africa. Well, of course, his service there was, as, as one might imagine, was highly outstanding. He was wounded in combat, received the Purple Heart, and then he received the Bronze Star for gallantry in action by saving a group of GIs. There was a, a truck that had been bombed and was about to explode within the area where these men were. And Roger jumped into the, the driver's seat and drove the truck out of the way just in time before the whole thing blew up. Now, I, I know about this because as an army person myself, I had wanted to know what happened to my brother. From North Africa, the, the division went to Sicily, and they were on their way to Rome, of course, to overcome the Germans. Within that time, they went through quite a few heavy battles. And since he was very talented uh, mathematically, uh, he developed mounting an 81 millimeter mortar on a Jeep that could be mounted and dismounted as the, the troops advanced. And it was significant in the Battle of Salerno. And for this, he received the Legion of Merit Medal, which subsequently was awarded to him at a regimental parade. Sadly, as the troops moved on in Sicily and went through many battles uh, and encounters, and he was written up in the memoirs of the commanding general, General Walker, for his heroism and he was killed on a special mission as the troops were advancing. Beverly, you may... Beverly, can you give us an example of one of the more inspiring experiences that you had while you were in the Army? Yes, I remember very distinctly uh, in Des Moines when I was in Officers Kennedy School, the dedication of the of the members, and in particularly how inspiring it was as we would march and formation for, for a reveille or a retreat with saluting the flag. There was a certain kind of pomp in what you might call circumstances as these women marched in unison with their arms raised and saluting the colors as we proceeded. It was the feeling of extreme patriotism and dedication, I guess, is the word. Okay. And the, um, what medals did you earn? Well, uh, the medals I received for my services was the, um, the Women's Army Corps, Army's Odeary Corps Medal, the American Theatre of uh, medal and the victory medal, which I'm wearing here. Okay. And uh, we'll be photographing those medals. Yes. Okay. And after the service, so uh, where did you work? What did you do? Well, <clears throat> while I was um, stationed in, in Manhattan, uh, I had uh, resumed my relationship with uh, the gentleman by who were, well we were we didn't exactly
we didn't exactly, you know, have a 100% uh, commitment, but at any rate, I did, after it looked like I was going to be stationed in New York for a period of time, uh, we were married, and I remained, uh, of course, in the service, and my, my husband, who is a uh, professor at Columbia School of, uh, of Dentistry and an ardent uh, uh, interest in sailing and nav celestial navigation, so on, wanted to enlist in the, in the Navy. And he went down to the Naval office in Manhattan and he was told to remain in Columbia and teach those men who were, had, were being trained in medicine and dentistry. So that's what uh, he did. His name was Dr. Solomon and Rosenstein, but he was always known as Sam. You had gone, you had mentioned for a teacher's license. You had gone yes, to a teacher's well, license. Yes, well, when I came out of the service, in 46, of course, always having been active, I had to have something to do. And since I was trained as a teacher, I took the, um, my license, my teaching license exam, and was, uh, and at that time, there was a need uh, for high school teachers. And I taught English at that, that, that that time, the school was a vocational high school, the School of Industrial Art, where the students were all talented artistically, but they were not uh, uh, involved particularly academically. That was a, an, another school in the city. But these students were very talented, so they were trained to be in, say, a, a commercial art field or any branch thereof. But my field was English, and I taught them uh, English. Was that at Hunter College? No. No, that was after I had gotten my license. Okay. But I did teach. Then after that, actually, I taught at Hunter College. When I came out of the service, too, I went to see. I had been active as a student at Hunter, and uh, I'd been president of my class uh, in high school. I, and in college, I was a secretary, treasurer. I went to see the dean, Dean Egan at the time, and she told me, Beverly, they are decided to paint the portraits of alumni and the armed forces. And Joseph, Professor Joseph Cummings Chase will be painting the portraits. So when, on a leave that I had, I visited with him in his studio in Chelsea, and he painted my portrait, and it hangs at Hunter College as an alumna on the armed forces. And that was done in uniform? You were in uniform? Yes, in full uniform. Mm -hmm. You had uh, four sons. Yes. Uh, how about grandchildren? Uh, and I have eight grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Okay. My sons are all distinguished. Three of them are Eagle Scouts, one is a Life Scout, and that's because he was involved in extra training at the time, and um, but that's my eldest son. He's now Dr. Roger G. Rosenstein. He's a hand surgeon in Bergen County and very well known. And my second son, who is an Eagle Scout, and a very ardent scouter, has his own troop, spoke at the, the Hillsdale Memorial Day service in town uh, twice. He was, all my sons were Jasons, as they call it, junior assistant scout, scouts at Troop 108, which is an outstanding troop, naturally. <laughs> And they went to the Jamboree. Uh, Dwight is a neurologist in Great Neck. And Fred, who also went to the, um, the Jamboree when it was in 
of Idaho, and they were there when the astronauts flew over. Uh, that was in 1969. Uh, and they dipped their, most of the astronauts were scouts and dipped their wings, so to speak, to the encampment in uh, Idaho. Then, uh, and Elliot, who was also, who also was an Eagle Scout, he was the scout, Eagle Scout representing uh, Bergen County at the tercentennial uh, celebration in Washington. So you can see this is the family tradition of serving has not diminished. You mentioned too, you have one great grandson. And my great grandson, <laughs> yes, he's, uh, let's see, Sydney's about eight months old. He's the offspring of my eldest son, eldest daughter, Melissa, who is also an MD. She is a, a field is OBGYN, and her specialty is high risk pregnancy. And let's see, her sister, Hillary, is also an MD, and her, she's finishing her residency in uh, family medicine. Yeah, <laughs> we all, they're all Columbia folk, uh, except Melissa went to Penn Med School on a scholarship. And, but, and uh, their younger sister, uh, Eliza, who, <laughs> despite my urging, went to Brown University. <laughs> and her work is more in environmental causes and so on. We have a lot of scouts because my son Dwight, who has two sons, uh, they're both Eagle Scouts and serving. And Dwight was honored, he's an honor scout. He got the prestigious uh, 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 Silver Beaver Award, which was the top honors in, in scouting besides Wood Badge and so on. And he, he served as a, one of the doctors at a couple of jamborees in the past. So you can see, we encourage it. Because <laughs> Sam, my husband, was the assistant scoutmaster at Troop 108. So we haven't stopped. I could go on and on. Why did you join the American Legion? Why did you join the American Legion? Well, I've always admired it. And as a matter of fact, I, I, I don't think I ever mentioned it. But after World War I, for which in which my uncle served, uh, and that was the beginning of when the Legion was formed, uh, either before or during, I don't know how the day exactly, the American Legion was formed, and he was one of the people who were part of it. And so the, the Legion was something that was always in the background, and with all the, the fine gentlemen of this post, <laughs> it was Fred Winkler, and, and George DeRosa, who said, Beverly, you have to join the Legion. So here I am. <laughs> well, we had to stop the aggression and prove to our foes that we were not going to be overcome. And so the only way to show them is to overcome them. And fortunately, we did. Beverly, on behalf of the American Legion, we thank you for your service. Well, I am very proud to be a member of the American Legion and particularly of this post because I know that all the men here are dedicated veterans and when they were called again, they would serve as I would too. <laughs>